Welcome to another Words of Matthias of Being Outdoors devotional. And this time I'm going to, I was thinking about what to talk about and um, and the Lord laid something on my heart and I'm going to try to talk about it and try to uh, maybe help us all as we can. This is something I think, think that all of us adults, kids, whatever age you are, uh, can really can really help us all if we'll take it to heart. You know, the Bible says be doers of the word and not hearers only. And uh, I'm going to read it. I'm going to skip around a little bit, but I'm going to read you a verse. In Ephesians 4.29, the Bible says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And the Bible says, Let no corrupt communication. When you think about that, you know, I think about corrupt, and I was trying to explain it to my kids on Sunday, and I was telling them, I said, you know, if you take a bananas or apples, I, most people think about bananas you buy at the grocery store, and you get home with them, and you take those bananas and you set them on the counter and you don't eat them, and uh, you just set them there. And after a week or so, they'll turn black or brown, and that always happens at our house. And um, they get gross. I mean, they're this rotten. They ain't no good. And, um, and, and I... And they're corrupt. They're just not, there's nothing good about them. I mean, they're, they're old, they're rotten, they're nasty. They can't, you can't eat them. They're a trash can item. And the Bible says, let no corrupt communication. And, you know, and today's time is a whole lot different than the Bible's times. You know, when the Bible says no corrupt communication, it's talking about a letter. It's talking about word of mouth. Um, today, think of all the communication that we have. Uh, we have... You know the TV or radio. We have uh, voicemails. We have uh, text messaging. We have email messages. We have Facebook <laughs> messages and people posting on Facebook. We got YouTube videos. Uh, people bashing other people. Um, uh, rants. Facebook rants. <laughs> Twitter rants. I mean, there's a ton of communication out there. Uh, we live in a communication world. Cell phones and all that stuff. But the Bible says, "Let no corrupt communication." And and what that's meaning is that none of those communication means are bad. There's nothing wrong with them, but it's talking about corrupt communication, using them in a wrong way. And you know, you think about corrupt, you think about stuff that's no good. And if it's no good, you know, like my mom always used to say, if it's not worth saying, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say it at all. Well, that means cuss words, uh, telling dirty jokes, um, spreading gossip, or spreading rumors. Even if they're true rumors on somebody, does it really need to be repeated? Um, we, we had a situation not too long ago, and um, you know, there was truth to what was being said, but it doesn't mean you go around and spread it, and, and that don't mean that it's your place to tell, tell it. And the Bible says, um, but that which is good to the use of edifying, and it means our speech, our communication, is supposed to be used to edify one another. It's supposed to be used in a good way, not in a bad way. And I was reading over in James chapter 3. If you read in James chapter 3, the Bible talks about the tongue. And it talks about how horses, you can put a bit in their mouth, you can control a horse, and everybody understands that. And, you know, a little helm on a boat and a rudder, you can turn a big boat. And it says those little things, and it's making a point, how, how they have such great power. And it's talking about how our tongue has great power. And our tongue can be used to hurt people. And it's very important that we watch our words and watch what we say. I think, and I was telling my kids this on Sunday, is that there's certain, there's certain people that you can beat them up physically. You, you could just beat them. Beat them with your fist or take a weapon, whatever. And you could really hurt them, but you couldn't hurt them as bad with your fist as you could with your tongue. And, and those kids looked at me like I was a little crazy, and I tried to explain to them. I said, you can start rumors on people, ruin people's reputations, um, just be ugly to somebody. I remember a kid growing up, and I won't call his name, that everybody ridiculed all the time. They made fun of him all the time. You know, just corrupt communication. There was nothing that was no good that was said. There was just corrupt com communication that just kept coming out and coming out and coming out. And, and very little was it physical bullying, it was all verbal bullying. And that's something, you know, traditionally people think about bullying. They think about physical bullying. But there's a lot of mental and verbal bullying. And, and that really, I think that's kicked up another whole notch with the ability of the communications that we have today. You know, people don't have to face people like they used to. 
So you'll get somebody on the internet and they'll blast somebody maybe in another state, another country, or somewhere else because they can hide behind their computer. And so people feel empowered that they can say whatever they want. But the Bible says we need to watch that and let no corrupt communication. And, and so as Christians, we need to watch and, and, and watch our tongues and watch what we say. And, and just always keep that verse in mind. If it's, if it's corrupt communication, just keep your mouth shut. And that, that's the best thing you can do. Now, if you're on the other side of that, where the corrupt communication is about you, and I don't know, it, it may be to your face, it may be um, somebody's just, uh, maybe the internet, you know, it may not be face to face, it may be, you know, somebody's put something on the internet bad about you or running their mouth. I don't know. I have no idea. But that's hard to deal with. You know, people's telling lies and, you know, the human nature and the sin nature is you want to go straighten that out, whether it's with your fist or telling them off or whatever. But the Bible tells us something else to do. And uh, in Romans 12, 20, the Bible says, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. It says, If he thirst, give him, give him drink. It says, For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Verse 21 says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And it, it outlines everything there is right there. You know, if you, if you got an enemy and he's hungry, you don't kick him in the face or kick dirt in his face, you give him something to eat. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And the Bible says that if you'll return goodness, that you'll overcome evil with good. You'll hit coals of fire on somebody's head. And I've seen that in my own life, that if, if there's someone who doesn't like you, um, or just somebody maybe trying to do what, be ugly to you, or, the best thing you do is just be nice to that person. Now, I don't mean you have to run up and hug their neck, but you can just be nice to them, you can talk to them, you don't have to give them mean, mean looks. Just say, hey, how you doing? And, and just be nice to them. And, and, and maybe they're being so bad to you, you know, you may not be able to have a relationship with them. You may not be able to be friends with them, but you can still be nice to them. And, that, and that's what the Bible's telling us. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, but I say to you, love your enemies. It says, bless them that curse you. Bless them. Hit them after cussing you out. Bless them. You know, that's what the Bible says. In Proverbs chapter 15, the Bible says that a soft answer turns away wrath. And I always think about on our bus round on Sunday sometimes, I've never had a kid get in an argument with another kid and where if the other the other kid the other party wasn't mouthing back they didn't get worse you know i've had kids say ugly things to another kid and, and me and my wife's had to deal with it and, and we said you know you and, and punish a kid maybe have to leave them a home a week or two or something like that where someone's acted up on the bus but i'm but if you have a kid that starts or adult that starts running their mouth, trying to start trouble, and the other party starts running their mouth too, that situation will never end up in a good way. It will end up with people yelling at each other, fighting with each other, physically maybe, uh, feelings get hurt, bad things come of that. But if you take one person getting upset and the other person just keeps a cool head and says, okay, you know, say bless you, yeah, and just lets it go, that situation will always turn out okay. Because it takes two to argue. And that's something, you know, whether it's our marriages, whether it's our family problems or whatever it is, we can always keep a soft answer. You know, the Bible says a little, little fire kindleth and we can either pour gas on the fire or we can pour water on the fire. It's all up to us and how we handle things. But try to remember that about let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Yeah, you know, that's something we all struggle with, me personally. You know, it's easy to jump on the bandwagon if you hear somebody getting talked about or, or if you know something about somebody. But let's keep our mouth shut if we ain't got nothing good to say. And if somebody's talking bad to us or being mean to us, let's take the high road. Let's love them anyway. Bless them that curse us. And do good to them which is spitefully used and persecute us. And, and remember, if our enemy hungers, feed him. You know, be not overcome with evil, but you overcome evil with good. And we can with the Lord's help do that. You know, the first step to being able to overcome, and like I told my kids, to overcome these type of problems is to have God's love in your heart. And the only way you're going to get God's love in your heart is if you follow John 3, 16. God loved you and me so much that 
What does it say? From God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that's Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and he comes in and he fills your heart with love, you can love like you need to love. You can turn the other cheek as the Bible says. You can learn to forgive and you learn to let things go because you have that ultimate example of Jesus who let people spit in his face who let people beat him and nail him on the cross. And he suffered all that because he loved you and me so much. And if he can do that and give us that example, we can only try to do what he did. And that's the seal. Thanks for watching. And we'll have another uh, devotional series coming up soon. Thank you.